Hello, my name is Neil Brooks with Rockwell Automation's Global Solutions Business. Today, we're going to show and demonstrate RAPID, a packaging line integration solution. RAPID is represented by 14 different machines in this line. Let's look at the individual machine add-on instructions. The add-on instructions displays the actual running state of the machine, whether run, block, starve, faulted, or as well as the overall process state of the machine, which would be CIP, change over maintenance, and another category for user required installations. Total count, scrap count, and when the machine is faulted, the actual root cause is also displayed. Um, overall information indicating the OEE performance of the machine and whether it's a final processing machine or a remote enabled machine, which we'll get to later. Additionally, a bottleneck machine is identified. So let's zoom out and take a look at the overall line. Each one of these add-on instructions are identical. They have been configured in a line representing the ins and out states of the machines. Next, let's look at the configuration of RAPID. The RAPID line configuration starts by selecting the line configuration button. That brings us to the 14 equipment modules and they can be enabled or disabled accordingly, as well as the names actually given to the modules. None of that has to be coded internally. Monitor only provides us the ability to select a machine as monitor only and not subject to up and downstream cascade control. Next, let's look at the line information screen. The line name, shift ID, and shift active are all listed in the upper left-hand corner. Um, most importantly, the order number, product name, and batch ID are listed. This is the operator entry information represented of the line that goes against the actual data collection for total counts, scrap counts, and OEE calculations on the line and machine level. Additionally, a bottleneck ID is a throughput limiting machine. RAPID also includes the recipe manager. The recipe manager allows us to save recipes and the entire line configuration of up and downstream equipment um, associated to the AOIs, as well as nine basic recipes, which are easily expanded. A line recipe matrix allows us the ability to represent and push recipes to the individual machine level. On the top, we have the line level recipes, and vertically, we have the machine level recipes. The matrix itself is equivalent to the operator selecting a recipe one, downloading, and then representing each individual machine recipe. Finally, a shift scheduler. The shift scheduler allows us to have uh, set Monday through Sunday shift scheduling as well as five breaks identified. This goes into the availability and non-availability of the actual line in production. Again, it's scaled out to 10, but very easily scaled out to further meeting customer needs. We additionally have the provisions of providing an enabled current shift override and a disabled shift override. These are handy for ending the shifts early or extending the shifts beyond the scheduled time. Next is the equipment configuration. The equipment configuration starts by selecting the equipment configuration. It's listed for all machines that are configured on the line. And initially, we'll go in the upper left-hand corner. Basic information that's been previously entered at the line level is shown in, in view only. But we also have the ability to in, enter a individual SKU for each machine that is recipe-driven and will be reflected in the reports. Additionally, design speed and unit ratios are pushed down to the machine. Next, the parameter definitions. The equipment enabled or disabled is shown on a recipe by recipe basis. Final process machine represents the final counts going into representing of the line for OEE. Material supplier machines are represented differently. Up and downstream blocked and starved has to do with cascade control. So in configuration of upstream and downstream, we have 14 represented AOIs. These need to be configured in terms of which machines are up and downstream. So we start with configuring downstream machines. We select one machine, that machine downstream from this machine is, is four. Um, if I wanna select an additional two or three machines, I can do that very easily by selecting the machines and identifying which machine unit numbers are downstream. That provides us the basic of cascade control without having to go into actual machine code, as well as time delays which show suspend and unsuspend. Conveyors are also additionally shown here. That's represented for cascade control um, we can define up to five lanes, 10 segments apiece. We are provided individual timers for the cascade control for blocked and starved conditions. 
the actual machine unit itself can be responding to the upstream machine or the upstream immediate conveyors associated with these timers. These timers can be entered in on a individual conveyor basis and is represented by the actual recipe themselves and saved accordingly. We will move this back to zero since there are no conveyors on this particular machine. And then finally, fault categories. Individual machines are gathering fault data, but these, the data for faults can be categorized. Um, in this case, we can have electrical, mechanical, or even add a fifth process state. Each of the alarms are provided in categories. Next is the equipment status screen. The equipment status screen starts by selecting the button on the bottom menu bar. Each of the 14 machines in this case are provided with their own individual button. We will select the diverter. In the upper section, we will see a lot of the same information in the configuration screen shown for the purposes of viewing by the operator. Identification parameters, actual faults, and overall recipe information is shown in the top section. Additionally, the actual equipment configuration is shown for up and downstream systems. Next, in the bottom section, is the most valuable information. Each machine has its own associated OEE dashboard report. The actual dashboard report shows the three components of OEE, availability, performance, and quality in the top section, as well as the overall machine state of the machine uh, across the duration of the production run. And then finally, in the bottom section is the total of durations and the total quantity of events of downtime associated with this machine. Next is overall line level reporting. The line level report starts at the line level reporting button. This particular button is very easily customized to put as many reports as the end user needs. The actual reports represented here, in this case, we'll hit a bottleneck dashboard report. This report at the line level is very similar to the equipment level in which OEE is shown at the top. The actual state across the shift of the machine status is, is also shown as well as the faulting event information. Again, we can put as many reports into this button as we want, matter of minutes, not hours or days. Next, this is a dashboard report representing of the line. OEE is shown. The actual production counts is shown in the left-hand bar as well as a trending report of OEE of the three components of OEE across the shift and duration. In the bottom table is overall event and downtime information associated with the actual line. And then next, finally, an OEE breakdown report. Again, these are just sample reports. Any of the reports that we show within this demo can be very easily put into these buttons. The actual OEE is broken down into its components for performance, actual running, availability, and total and scrap counts. And then finally, there's the advanced reporting. The advanced reporting takes us to Report Expert. Report Expert is the engine that drives all of the reporting within RAPID. There are two basic sets of reports. One, metric standard reports come with the Factory Talk Metrics product, of which there's approximately 60 reports built in. All of these built-in reports, loaded automatically by Factory Talk Metrics, do work with the RAPID add-on instruction model. Um, there are very many reports here. See a separate video to actually see a detailed listing of these particular reports. This particular one is a shift production for the week. Actually shows the machine performance of good and scrap parts coming from the entire line as configured. Ideally, there are individual dashboard reports. Um, for now, what we would like to focus in on is the customized reports loaded for rapid. There are basically line level reports and there are also 25 machine level reports. These are all replicated out. So there are nine individual customized reports. Reports are very easily customized um, and added for an actual end user's needs. The representative reports that we have here in Rapid as core are representative of what most customers are actually looking for. In this particular report, we have a dashboard that's showing us the top quantity of downtime events and of the overall durations of the events. In this, in this case, we are extracting out filler-based reports. Similar dashboard report, total top downtime durations and events, 
overall event history can be shown. This will give you a detailed listing of the actual events of the machines, the faults, when the faults occurred, and the duration of the faults. Overall OEE waterfall report is similar to that line level report we showed earlier, but on the individual machine level, as well as the dashboard report. The dashboard report will give us good fault, downtime, mean time between failures, mean time between recoveries. All of that data is collected on a machine by machine basis. Next, as you can see down below, there's a whiteboard. The whiteboard is actually broken down um, on an hourly basis you know, for each and every machine. The actual root cause state pi lists the actual individual states of the machines in a different represented fashion. Again, the table below will break down the actual events in durations of time and starting and stopping of the events. Next, let's look at a root cause report. The root cause report lists the duration of the shift and all the events and gives you a graphical representation of where those events occurred during the shift. Production overview report um, also gives you an indication of the components of OEE as well as a breakdown of OEE for the individual category selected. So what we would like to do next is kind of look at ad hoc reporting. So let's go ahead and take, in this case, a production overview report. This gives us a report of the entire line. Again, as you can see, we're at the line level of the report. The production overview report gives us all 14 machines configured on the line and their OEE uptime and quality performance characteristics. If the end user wants to look at, let's say, reporting against only three of the machines or wanting to be able to take the report, spin it, look at data in a different way, and then save it off into Excel, this is very easily done using the Report Expert tool. It's important to note at this point in time, as we're selecting what machines we actually want to look at in this report, that we have the ability to take these reports and actually run them in the back office using Internet Explorer. We do not need actually the Rapid Portal to be able to do this. As you can see, I've configured this particular same report with just a matter of clicks against the blow molder, rinser, and filler. Now I can compare specifically these three machines against each other, as well as looking at the overall productive OEE calculations on an hourly basis. If I want to change the data, and let's say if I want to spin the report against work cell, then shift ID, the actual table itself will pivot and be represented in the selections that we choose. So in this case, now shift order is prior to part ID and hour. For the purposes of demonstrations, we don't have obviously more than one shift, so some of the data is not readily viewable. But as you can see in demonstrating this, we have many different ways, an infinite number of ways to actually collect the data and spin the reports in a different fashion. So in this particular case, we'll do, do it by work cell, shift number, and then uh, work order. As you can see, now that we have the machines broke down by work, by work cell, we actually actually have the shift number as opposed to the shift starting time. So now let's say if we want to just streamline this report a little bit more, let's get rid of um, shift ID, and we can change that to work order, and then break down by hour, and let's just get rid of the fourth component, spin the report, view it again, and again, any of these reports that we see here is just one click away from getting into Excel and being able to email to, to somebody that's interested in the data. As you can see, if we had more than one work order, you would see a work down breakdown, but it's broken down by work order and then by, by hour in this particular case. So the reporting tools are very, very valuable. In the final example that I'll do, I'll just do standard work cell for the 14 machines, or in this case, the three machines that I'm comparing against, against the actual hours in production. For the demonstrating purposes, I'll increase the machine counts to all 14. And we'll leave off some of the machines that I'm not really interested in OEE, which would be some of the supplier machines like the inserters. So as we select that, we'll hit the report, spin it, and now we'll actually see OEE production totals against the work hours uh, of the duration of the of the production run and the OEE values associated with it. So it's a very handy tool um, allowing the end user to compare 
machine assets to machine assets and break things down in a work order fashion. That concludes our reporting demonstration. Next, what we would like to demonstrate is the most important feature of RAPID that separates it from other reporting solutions. That is specifically line integration control. We've mentioned it previously that there's 14 add-on instructions associated with this line. The add-on instructions allow us to have coordinated control between machines. So what I have here is a simulation screen that allows me to start and stop individual machines. As we configured earlier in the demonstrations, we have connected the add-on instructions representing each machine and have represented up and downstream blocked and starved states. So in this case, I'm going to fault the filler. The filler shows as an electrical fault. And as you can see, cascade control is coming from the rapid supervisor to send suspend signals down. Now what's important to note here is the individual machines are not required to be hardwired to each other, nor is there soft wired communications going to the machines. All 14 machines are talking to the supervisor, rapid controller. Rapid controller is monitoring the states of the machine. And in this case, as you can see, the bottleneck machine, the filler, went down for a fault. Associated timers are built into the configuration, recipe-based for rapid. And suspend signals came down for blocked and starved of those states. So the machines do not necessarily need to see each other, know the status of each other, but rather the rapid supervisor is going to control them. Now what we can see is that the filler is faulted. But up and downstream from there, more importantly, the root cause of the other faults and for blocked and starved conditions is also shown. And as you can see throughout the entire line, the cascade control blocked and starved all the machines. So now what I've done is restarted the filler. The filler is going to basically do the inverse of what we just did, and that is to unsuspend from a line supervisory state all the machines. And so now, as you can see, as they build out, the individual machines are going back to a running state. So now let's look at the actual individual machine and configuration. So what I want to do now is look at the rinser. So as we look at the rinser, we want to note what's up and downstream. So downstream of the rinser is the filler. So I want to change the suspend signal coming from the rapid supervisor due to a downstream equipment, in this case, the filler. Likewise, the capper is downstream of the filler, so I want to look at the upstream time delay of the suspend signal coming from a filler event. So now I will simulate another filler fault, and what we'll see now, instead of two seconds in terms of cascade control, we'll see a total of 10 seconds. Okay, so what I'll do now is open up simulation screen again and go ahead and simulate a filler fault. And as you can see now, the capper and the rinser are not reacting to the filler very quickly. It takes a total of 10 seconds now for the cascade control to take effect. We didn't change any of the other machines, so you can see the cascade control is actually going uh, in a much quicker fashion. What's important to note here is, is this cascade control replaces typical priming photo eyes up and downstream from the unit centers. Likewise, since Rapid is a recipe-based configuration solution, you have the ability to change these settings for cascade control up and downstream. That now concludes the overall Rapid presentation. Thank you for listening.